A lot of the media have discussed the end of cities. A lot of the media have discussed the end of downtowns. The idea being that workers who are allowed to work from home will leave in large numbers expensive cities and will move to cheaper locations and will keep working for the same employers remotely. And this will uh, imply a decline in the economic vitality of U.S. star cities and also a decline in the downtown areas, which will be empty and devoid of retail and local services. I think it's really important to think about the long run and what this, the economic forces uh, might change, the, the economic forces that we discussed so far in our uh, four lectures so far might change after COVID. Um, there's no question that work from home is, is more widespread than it used to be. Uh, it's important to distinguish between two types of work from home because they have different effects for the future of, different impact for the future of cities. On one hand, there is um, jobs that can be under percent work from home. This means that a worker is not required to go to an office ever. They can work from home remotely and never need to be physically present in the office. On the other hand, there is what's called hybrid work, where a worker can work from home some days a week, but needs to go to the office two or three days of the week, typically. Now, the first type of work from home allows workers to relocate uh, far away and, and therefore leave uh, cities. The second type preserves the link between the location of the office and the location of the residence. Uh, it might allow for relocation within a metro area, um, but it, 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 it still requires uh, most workers to live in the same metropolitan area where their office is located. So in, I, I've been trying to quantify the prevalence of the first type of work from home, the under percent work from home, because that's the one that is most consequential for the future of cities, because it allows workers to leave uh, potentially expensive cities. And I've been using a data set that includes all the universe of online job posting for the U.S. It's a very detailed data set that is very timely and so allows me to follow in almost in real time changes in, in the share of job posting that are for under percent work from home jobs as a share of all uh, office jobs. And what I find is quite interesting is that in most cities in the U.S., uh, the share of 100% work from home jobs were small before the pandemic, was about around 2%. It tripled uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so it increased from 2 to 6%, in some cases a little bit more. And then it, it, it stabilized. You can see this in this graph that shows the share of all office jobs uh, that are under percent work from home. Uh, this is from job posting. So this is the new jobs that are created. It shows you that in Boston, uh, the share was 2% before the pandemic. You see the red line represents the onset of the pandemic. It's February, 2020. You see the, the, the jobs jumping up and reaching about 6% quite quickly and then stabilizing around that percentage. Uh, you see a similar pattern in New York City, for example. You see this sudden increase from 2 to 6% and then a general stabilization. Uh, other cities have a similar pattern, like uh, this is Los Angeles. Uh, again, uh, you see an average of work from home around 2% before the pandemic and around 6% after the pandemic. San Francisco has a higher share in part because there are some occupation in tech that are more easily uh, performed, 100% remotely. But even in San Francisco, uh, the share of new jobs that are advertised as 100% work from home remains between 9 and 10%. The bottom line is that um, the share of, of, of new jobs that are uh, that allow a worker to to never go to the office increased significantly during the pandemic. It tripled, but also its overall number remains quite low. 
it remains the exception rather than the rule. It remains between 6 and 8% in most US cities, 10% at the most in San Francisco. So in my mind, um, only time will tell for sure exactly how work from home will change US cities. But I think there are good reason, good economic reason to think that the same economic forces that were active before COVID, that made star cities so attractive to employers before COVID, will be in place after COVID. 